ಶಾರದಾಂ ದೇವಿ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಜಗದ್ಗುರು ಪಾದಪದ್ಮೇ ತಯೋ ಶ್ರೀ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಮುಹೂರ್ಮುಹು ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಶುಭ ಸಂಧ್ಯಾ ಆಜ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ರಂಗನಾಥಾನಂದಜಿ ಎಂದು ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಗಹನಾನಂದಜಿ ನಾಮಾಂಕಿತ ಈ ಪುಣ್ಯ ಸಂಧ್ಯಾ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ರಂಗನಾಥಾನಂದಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ರಂಗನಾಥಾನಂದಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಉಣಿಶ ಆಠ ಖ್ರೀಷ್ಟಾಬ್ದೇ ಪಂದ್ರ ಡಿಸೆಂಬರ್ ಕೇರಳ ರಾಜ್ಯ ತ್ರಿಚೂರ ನಿಕಟವರ್ತೀ ತ್ರಿಕ್ಕುರೆ ಜನ್ಮಗ್ರಹಣ ಕೊಡಿಸಿಲೆನ್ ಮಾತ್ರ ಸತರ ಬತ್ಸರ ಬಯಸೆ ಮೈಸೂರೇ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಿಷನ್ ಆಶ್ರಮ ತಿ ಯೋಗದಾನ ಕರೆನ್ ಉಣಿಶ ಛಾಬ್ಬಿಸ ಖ್ರೀಷ್ಟಾಬ್ದೆ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪದ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಶಿವಾನಂದಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜರ ಕಾಛೆ ತಿ ಮಂತ್ರ ದೀಕ್ಷಾ ಲಾಭ ಕರೆನ್ ಉಣಿಶ ಉನತ್ರಿಶ ಖ್ರೀಷ್ಟಾಬ್ದೆ ತಿ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಚರ್ಯ ಅಭಿಷಿಕ್ತ ಹನ್ ತೇತ್ರಿಶ ಖ್ರೀಷ್ಟಾಬ್ದೆ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪದ ಮಹಾಪುರುಷ ಮಹಾರಾಜರ ಕಾಛೆಯ ತಿ ಸನ್ಯಾಸ ದೀಕ್ಷಾ ಲಾಭ ಕರೆನ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ವಿವೇಕಾನಂದರ ಪರೆ ವೇದಾಂತ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನರ ಸಮನ್ವಯ ಸಾಧನ ಸಂಭವತ ತಾಂ ಶ್ರೇಷ್ಠ ಕೀರ್ತಿ ತಿ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನ ಓ ಧರ್ಮೇರ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಕಲ್ಪಿತ ಭೇದರೇಖಾ ಮುಚೆ ದಿ ಚೇಲೆನ್ ತಾಂ ಎಹ್ಯನ ಮಹತಿ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಾರ ಉತ್ಕೃಷ್ಟ ಉದಾಹರಣ ಹಲ ತಿನ್ಟಿ ಪ್ರಧಾನ ಉಪನಿಷದರ ಉಪರೆ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಿಷನ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಅಫ್ ಕಲ್ಚರೆ ತಾಂ ಪ್ರದತ್ತ ವಕ್ತೃತಾವಳಿ ಸಂಬಲಿತ ದಿ ಮ್ಯಾಸೇಜ ಅಫ್ ದಿ ಉಪನಿಷದ್ ನಾಮಕ ಮೂಲ್ಯವಾನ ಗ್ರಂಥ ಎಕಿ ಮಹತಿ ಪ್ರತಿಷ್ಠಾರ ಉಜ್ಜ್ವಲ ಸಾಕ್ಷ್ಯ ಬಹನ ಕರೆ ತಾಂ ಆರ ಕೈಕ್ಟಿ ಮೂಲ್ಯವಾನ ರಚನಾ ಯಥಾ ಸೋಶಲ್ ರೆಸ್ಪನ್ಸಿಬಿಲಿಟಿಸ್ ಅಫ್ ಪಾಬ್ಲಿಕ್ ಅಡಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಎನ್ಲೈಟೆಂಡ್ ಸಿಟಿಜನ್ಶಿಪ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಡೆಮೋಕ್ರೆಟಿಕ್ ಅಡಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಲೈಟ್ ಅಫ್ ಪ್ರ್ಯಾಕ್ಟಿಕಲ್ ವೇದಾಂತ ಮಹಾರಾಜರ ಅತಿ ಪರಿಚಿತ ಗ್ರಂಥರಾಜರ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ರೋಚೆ ಇಟರ್ನಲ್ ವ್ಯಾಲ್ಯೂಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ಅ ಚೇಂಜಿಂಗ್ ಸೊಸೈಟಿ ಯೂನಿವರ್ಸಲ್ ಮ್ಯಾಸೇಜ್ ಅಫ್ ದಿ ಭಗವದ್ ಗೀತಾ ಇತ್ಯಾದಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಜೀ ಉಣಿಶ ಬಾಷಟ್ಟಿ ಥೇ ಸಾತಷಟ್ಟಿ ಖ್ರೀಷ್ಟಾಬ್ದ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಿಷನ್ ಇನ್ಸ್ಟಿಟ್ಯೂಟ್ ಅಫ್ ಕಲ್ಚರೆ ಸಂಪಾದಕ ಪದೆ ವೃತ್ತ ಛಿಲೆನ್ ವೇದಾಂತರ ಐಕ್ಯರ ಬಾಣೀರ ಅನುಸರಣೆ ತಿ ಜಾತಿ ಧರ್ಮರ ಭೇದಾಭೇದ ಕೆ ಉಪೇಕ್ಷಾ ಕೊಡ್ತೆ ಪಾರ್ತೆನ್ ಮಾನವಿಕ ಮೂಲ್ಯಬೋಧೇರ ಅವಕ್ಷಯ ತಿ ವ್ಯಥಿತ ಹೋತೆನ್ ಜನಪ್ರತಿನಿಧಿದರ ಮಧ್ಯೆ ಮಾನವಿಕ ಮೂಲ್ಯಬೋಧ ವಿಕಾಸರ ಉದ್ದೇಶ ನಿಯ ತಿ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಅಕಾಡೆಮಿ ಅಫ್ ಅಡಮಿನಿಸ್ಟ್ರೇಷನ್ ಎಂದು ದಿಲ್ಲಿ ಓ ಮುಸೌರಿರ ಕೇಂದ್ರಗುಲಿ ಎಂದು ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಡಿಫೆನ್ಸ ಕಲೇಜ ಮೂಲ್ಯವಾನ ವಕ್ತೃತಾ ಪ್ರದಾನ ಕೊಡಿಸಿಲೆನ್ ಎಡಾ ಚೌಷಟ್ಟಿ ಥೇ ಸಾತಷಟ್ಟಿ ಖ್ರೀಷ್ಟಾಬ್ದ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ತಿ ಇಂಡಿಯನ್ ನ್ಯಾಷನಲ್ ಕಮಿಷನರ ಸದಸ್ಯ ಛಿಲೆನ್ ಭಾರತವರ್ಷರ ಸನಾತನ ಧರ್ಮ ಓ ಸಂಸ್ಕೃತಿ ಸಾರ್ಥಕ ಪ್ರತಿನಿಧಿ ಹಿಸಾಬೆ ಛೆಚಲ್ಲಿಶ ಥೇ ಛಿಯಾಶಿ ಖ್ರೀಷ್ಟಾಬ್ದ ಪರ್ಯಂತ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪದ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಜೀ ಬಹುಬಾರ ಪೃಥ್ವೀರ ವಿಭಿನ್ನ ದೇಶ ಪರಿಭ್ರಮಣ ಕೊಡಿಸೆನ್ ಉಣಿಶ ಎಕಷಟ್ಟಿ ಖ್ರೀಷ್ಟಾಬ್ದೆ ಪೂಜನೀಯ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಜೀ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಠ ಓ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಿಷನರ ಓಛಿ ಪರಿಷದ ಸದಸ್ಯ ನಿರ್ವಾಚಿತ ಹನ್ ಉನಬ್ಬೈ ಖ್ರೀಷ್ಟಾಬ್ದೆ ಏಪ್ರಿಲ್ ಮಾಸೆ ತಿ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಠ ಓ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಿಷನರ ಸಹ ಸಂಘಾಧ್ಯಕ್ಷರ ಪದೆ ವೃತ್ತ ಹನ್ ಉಣಿಶ ಆಠಾನಬ್ಬೈ ಖ್ರೀಷ್ಟಾಬ್ದೆ ತಿ ಸಂಘಗುರುರ ಪದೆ ಅಭಿಷಿಕ್ತ ಹನ್ ಪ್ರಥಮೆ ಸಹ ಸಂಘಾಧ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಎಂದು ಪರವರ್ತಿಕಾಲೆ ಸಂಘಾಧ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಹಿಸಾಬೆ ತಿ ಅಸಂಖ್ಯ ಭಕ್ತ ನರ ನಾರಿ ಮಂತ್ರ ದೀಕ್ಷಾ ಪ್ರದಾನ ಕೊಡಿಸೆನ್ ಪೂಜನೀಯ ರಂಗನಾಥಾನಂದಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ಛಿಯಾನಬ್ಬೈ ಬತ್ಸರ ಬಯಸೆ ಪಚಿಶೆ ಏಪ್ರಿಲ್ ದು ಹಜಾರ ಪಾಂಚ ಸಾಲೆ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಲೋಕೆ ಯಾತ್ರಾ ಕರೆನ್ ಶ್ರೀ ಸುಕುಮಾರ ಚಂದ್ರ ಭೌಮಿಕ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಶಕ್ತಿರಾಣಿ ಭೌಮಿಕ ಓ ಶ್ರೀ ಹಿರಣ್ಮಯ ಘೋಷ ಚೌಧರಿ ಶ್ರೀಮತಿ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಘೋಷ ಚೌಧರಿ ಪೃಷ್ಠಪೋಷಕತಾಯ ಈ ಸಾರಕ ವಕ್ತೃತಾ ಸುಆಯೋಜಿತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ ಗಹನಾನಂದಜಿ ಮಹಾರಾಜ ರಾಮಕೃಷ್ಣ ಮಠ ಓ ಮಿಷನರ ಚತುರ್ದಶ ಸಂಘಾಧ್ಯಕ್ಷ ಪೂಜ್ಯಪದ ಶ್ರೀಮತ್ ಸ್ವಾಮಿ
তার নাম হল ব্রহ্মচারী অমৃত চৈতন্য পরে উনিশশো আটচল্লিশ খ্রিস্টাব্দের বারোই মার্চ নিজ গুরুর কাছেই তিনি সন্ন্যাস দীক্ষা লাভ করেন ভুবনেশ্বর থেকে মঠ কর্তৃপক্ষের নির্দেশে উনিশশো বেয়াল্লিশ খ্রিস্টাব্দে তিনি কলকাতার অদ্বৈত আশ্রমে চলে আসেন সাতচল্লিশ সালে তিনি মায়াবতীতে এসে ধ্যান জপের মধ্যে নিজেকে বিলীন করে দেন তিপ্পান্ন খ্রিস্টাব্দে তিনি মেঘালয়ের শিলং আশ্রমে যুক্ত হন উনিশশো আটান্ন খ্রিস্টাব্দে স্বামী গহনানন্দজি কলকাতার শিশুমঙ্গল চিকিৎসালয়ে আসেন আটান্ন আটান্ন সাল থেকে তিয়াত্তর খ্রিস্টাব্দ পর্যন্ত পাঁচ বৎসর সেখানে একনিষ্ঠ সেবক হিসাবে অক্লান্ত পরিশ্রম করেন তারপর সেখানকার সম্পাদক রূপে পঁচাশি খ্রিস্টাব্দ পর্যন্ত মোট সাতাশ বৎসর ওই হাসপাতাল পরিচালনা করেন গহনানন্দজির চেষ্টায় শিশুমঙ্গল শৈশবস্থা কাটিয়ে সেবা প্রতিষ্ঠান রূপে বিশাল কলেবর প্রাপ্ত হয় গহনানন্দজি রামকৃষ্ণ মিশন সেবা প্রতিষ্ঠান পরিচালনার পাশাপাশি রামকৃষ্ণ মঠের অছি পরিষদ এবং রামকৃষ্ণ মিশনের পরিচালক সমিতির সদস্য রূপেও দায়িত্ব পালন করেছেন এরপর উনআশি থেকে উননব্বই খ্রিস্টাব্দ পর্যন্ত তিনি সংঘের অন্যতম সহকারী সাধারণ সম্পাদক রূপে এবং উননব্বই খ্রিস্টাব্দে সাধারণ সম্পাদকের দায়িত্ব গ্রহণ করেন উনিশশো আশি খ্রিস্টাব্দে রামকৃষ্ণ সংঘের দ্বিতীয় মহাসম্মেলনের প্রধান উদ্যোক্তাদের অন্যতম স্বামী গহনানন্দজি মহারাজ সংঘের অন্যতম সাধ্যক্ষ নিযুক্ত হন উনিশশো বিরানব্বই খ্রিস্টাব্দে কাকুরগাছ স্থিত জগদ্দান মঠের অধ্যক্ষ ছিলেন তিনি দু হাজার পাঁচ খ্রিস্টাব্দের পঁচিশে মে পূজ্যপাত মহারাজ সংঘের চতুর্দশ সংঘাধ্যক্ষ নির্বাচিত হন মহারাজের কৃপা যেন শত সহস্র ধারায় ভক্তবৃন্দের ওপর বর্ষিত হতে থাকে অবশেষে দু হাজার সাত খ্রিস্টাব্দে চৌঠা নভেম্বর শ্রীমৎ স্বামী গহনানন্দজি মহারাজ রামকৃষ্ণ লোকে যাত্রা করেন স্বামী গহনানন্দজি স্মারক বক্তৃতাটি শ্রীমতী সুস্মিতা ভাবালের পৃষ্ঠপোষকতায় আয়োজিত এই দুটি বক্তৃতাই যৌথভাবে আজ প্রদান করবেন বেদান্ত সোসাইটি নেদারল্যান্ডসের শ্রীমত স্বামী সুনির্মলানন্দজি মহারাজ আপনারা সকলেই তার সম্পর্কে অবগত আছেন তিনি পূজ্যবাদ শ্রীমৎ স্বামী ভূতেশানন্দজি মহারাজেরও নীরব নিভৃত সেবক ছিলেন মহারাজজি দীর্ঘ পনেরো বৎসর পরে দেশে এসেছেন এবং আজ তিনি আমাদের মাঝে বক্তৃতা প্রদান করবেন তার আলোচনার বিষয় নতুন দৃষ্টিতে অদ্বৈত বেদান্ত স্বামী সুনির্মলানন্দজি মহারাজ जननी शारदा देवी रामकृष्ण जगद्गु पाद पद्मे तय श्रीवा प्रणमा मुहुर्मुह पूज्यपाद महाराज के प्रणाम कुरी महाराज देव प्रणाम अमी इंग्लिशे बोलब अपना दया कर क्षमा कर देवें इंग्लिशे बोलब द सबजेक्ट दैट we have chosen today is a new interpretation of advaita which actually is not the correct way to say what i wanted to say is there is a different outlook at viewing advaita vedanta <coughs> nowadays there is a lot of study in vedanta even in advaita vedanta etc thanks to youtube there are so many speakers who are delivering wonderful lectures on advaita vedanta this interest in vedanta itself and in advaita vedanta in particular is not limited only to india elsewhere also there is a lot of study going on and there are so many speakers who give wonderful notions and ideas from different angles but there are also a few who due to 
lack of proper understanding of the central theme of advaita vedanta may misinterpret or may give some different ideas of advaita so i thought we should speak about this subject based on tradition and also on modernity whenever you speak of advaita vedanta what do you say this world is unreal maya this world is unreal now what is this unreal is it magic suppose you remove this is there brahman below is this a cover what does this unreal mean this is a question as they say gotanugotik this tradition has been passed on from hand to hand down the centuries or even down the decades and everybody uses the word unreal this world is unreal brahman is real this world is unreal <clears throat> brahma satyam jagan mithya that is translated as unreal so now are we or unreal is this world unreal is this universe and what does this mean that is the question before going to that we would like to touch upon the history of this advaita vedanta did shankara acharya initiate advaita vedanta was he the originator or founder or propounder of advaita vedanta not necessarily advaita vishishta and dvaita and other schools also are all ever present ideals or view points of reality in the vedas we have this idea na sadasi no sadasi tama asi tamasa gudham agre atma va idam agra asit in the initial stages or in the beginning agre atma va asi there was only the atman there was only one reality that is what advaitin say they also say in the upanishad that dve rupe brahmana vyaktam cha avyaktam cha the visible and the non visible or two forms of brahman these are some of the vedic ideas there are hundreds of them in fact about the idea of advaita the word itself is sort of negative advaita duality non duality advaita so later on we come to the bhagavad gita because that could be the next of the prasthana trayi there krishna says that this reality and unreality or two aspects then we come down to the brahma sutras and later on we have the commentators the general notion is that bhagavan shankara acharya wrote commentaries on the three ways to liberation prasthana trayi and thus established advaita vedanta on firm grounds this is the tradition this tradition also says according to shankara digvijaya that he was born in kerala etc whether or not 
he was from kerala is a different question of course it is accepted kaladi etc but not a word of malayalam in any of his literature not a word of malayalam because if there is a scholar from bengal he will write at least one or two poems or something in bengali it's natural but anyway in any case he traveled all over india he established centers the main act of shankaracharya in establishing the advaita vedanta was that he had to fight a lot of opposing forces that was the most important work of shankaracharya there were dualists there were people who did sacrifices who thought that that was the only way to brahman or reality or swarga then there were the sankhyans so shankara had to within his short span of life defend advaita vedanta by discussing with different people and establishing this path that is his greatness secondly there is an idea around that shankara was a crypto buddhist you have all heard that shankara accepted some of the ideas of buddhism etc we hear that according to buddhism as you all know there were four important schools buddhistic schools one is vaibhashika the second one is sautrantika the third one was yogachara buddhism and the fourth was shunyavadin the idea is that shankara acharya might have taken ideas from shunyavada buddhism bahyartha pratyakshatvam this is vaibhashika what you see outside bahyartha artha means things or real real they are not imaginary bahyartha pratyakshatvam they are solid this was vaibhashika buddhist bahyartha anumeyatvam the things that you see outside are not there there is no chair there is no table it's all imaginary anumeyatvam that was sautrantika bauddhas the third group called yogachara buddhists said bahyartha shunyatvam nothing is there outside you are imagining things there is nothing outside outside this idea was taken up and developed further by phenomenologists in the late 19th century in france etc phenomenologists also said that the external idea is not there in fact what we see is this suppose you see this table by the time the process happens and it goes inside its history it may not be there at all suppose you stand here and see some star you are seeing the star maybe 10000 years ago the star is already gone but the light reaches you later similarly things outside or shunyatvam then came nagarjuna the shunyavada buddhist he said nothing is there sarva shunyatvam standing on this solid earth he declared that sarva shunyatvam so they think that shankara acharya accepted these ideas and developed his theory but we all know that buddhism is considered a nastika philosophy why do we call that because they don't accept the veda what is accepting the veda accepting reality or brahman as the ground of everything if somebody says there is no basis no ground they are nastikas charvakas are nastikas bauddhas are nastika so shankara acharya was a astika he based his philosophy on the vedas so advaita speaking of history still was already there shankara established advaita vedanta now 
we come to the important idea of what exactly shankara said you can see hundreds of videos tens of videos at least and books and articles oh shankara said this world is unreal this is unreal did shankara really say this if we consider his brahma sutra bhashya as the standard he said in the beginning as you all know yushmad asmat pratyaya gochara yoh vishaya vishayino tamah prakashavat viruddha swabhava yoh itare tara bhava anupapatto siddhayam etc there are two he never said that everything is unreal everything is belki maya no he said yushmad and asmad are two things what does that mean there is something called i there is something called you this you may be this world this body itself there are two but what is the mistake happening we are confusing you for me me for you itare tar bhava anupapatto siddhayam even though we know that you cannot be i i cannot be we are confusing it this adhyasa which is the central word of advaita vedanta which many commentators and speakers don't say about is the problem wrong knowledge shankara was saying that there is a confusion you confuse i for you you for me that means what is this i we don't know we say this body is i this body with clothes is i but actually that is not i we go deeper and say it is not i so shankara was saying that secondly i have that quotation ha shankara acharya wrote in the bhagavad gita commentary on fourth chapter this is very interesting i am insisting on this because i will come to the point later nausthasya navi gachantyam तटस्थु अगतिषु नगेशु प्रतिकूल गतिदर्शना दूरेशु चक्षुषा असन्निकृष्टेशु गच्छत्सु गत्याभावदर्शना ई विल टेल यू वॉट इट ईज अबउट देर इज अ मैन हू ईज ट्रैवलिंग ऑन ए बोट इन दि ईवनिंग ही सीज ट्रीज गोइंग बैक्वर्ड्स he sees above and the stars are stationary shankara says this confusion also is there along with this first confusion of i confusing for you you confusing for i there is this confusion also what is that you think that the trees are moving backwards they are stationary virtually but the stars are moving very fast but they appear to be stationary now in recent times who said this who got the nobel prize in 1905 1915 etc for relativity so relativity is something different from reality and unreality about which i shall speak later shankara acharya also says in another place in the bhagavad gita suppose you say everything is avidya etc so the opponent asks him so avidya kasya shankara says yasya drishyate tasya eva so it is only an individual oriented universe that means what he wants to say is what you think of i is wrong shankara's main thrust and concern was to say that the idea of false ego has to be removed 
that is the central point of advaita vedanta oh this world is unreal this universe is unreal everything is maya everything is belki even not like that it is also possible but the main thing is false ego is unreal who am i really i am confusing myself with this body and thinking that this body is me shankara says no so the whole thrust is about this false ego when this goes false ego goes our confusion about this world also goes goes away so coming to this maya we are in this world called maya we say brahma satyam jagan mithya this mithya jagat so what is this mithya it has been traditionally translated as unreal it is not unreal it is relative what is relativity everything is real at that moment when you see later on it changes the world famous example which is given thousands of times is of tough rope and snake so there is darkness and you suddenly see a piece of rope and you think it is a snake then you bring a lamp and see that it is a snake what happened here actually when you saw the snake you saw the snake you saw the snake relatively when you saw the rope you saw the rope relatively when you see brahman only nothing else then you are seeing more reality so everything is time bound relativity that is what shankara said what do i mean till now what i have said this historically shankara was one of the founders in the sense of he established the philosophical basis of advaita vedanta it was there already secondly shankara said that there is always a confusion between what is objective or what is an object and what is a subject who is this subject shankara wanted to remove the wrong notion of false subjective i use my false ego which is not my real i and think that that is the real thing shankara said no that is not the thing so what advaita shankara taught was go to that reality and what about this world etc yes this is all relative not unreal relative in what sense time bound desha kala everything is time bound even many of you physicists etc may know that what you call solid is not solid at all it has been proven now when you press this and you think this is a solid table or something like that it is not solid what is happening is the atoms here are pressing and these atoms are hitting back and therefore you feel that solidity otherwise everything is just space what we call empty space also is not empty space but it is thin matter there is matter only this is strong so therefore shankara wanted to say only this so what is advaita according to shankara everything is relative that is okay what are we doing now with this relativity we think this is all permanent and we hold on to this that is the problem everything is relative everything changes everything is time bound but we think this is all permanent and stable and we hold on to that because of this false ego false i that is where we are wrong that shankara says you must search who you are not just shankara our scriptures find out who you are you know the famous story of that little boy 
who went to his father and asked him i want to know brahman tapasa brahma vijigyasasva tapo brahmeti so he goes to the jungle and sits in meditation and after some days comes back to the teacher to his guru father and says now i understand this anna is brahma he says no go back prana is brahma after many days he comes back because prana is vitality that is what no go back that is not the thing then he comes mano brahmeti he says mind is brahma because because i think i am no that is not the end go further go do much more research and he comes back and finally when he comes back his face is glowing and he doesn't say anything the guru knows and the shishya knows that he has touched that reality we are always confusing you that is not i the object for the subject i am something different the dualists go through the path of bhakti and touch that same reality and call it god the advaitin is told to go through this path of what we call negation or whatever and then come to that reality now the next important question is you are all here you are all so busy taking a lot of trouble you have come here to listen about some advaita vedanta in what way is it relevant to modern times some thousands of years ago yes nowadays for this busy world in what way is this advaita vedanta useful for us in our life it's an important question we shall come to that now as you all know there are many definitely many engineers and scientists here they all know that something new is happening since the last 50 60 years the world has changed completely what happened we have the computer during the 1960s and 70s when the computer was new we had to sit before the computer and type when we get up the computer idea is gone because computer is limited to that computer you used to work there slowly something else came we called it internet so internet slowly connected us we started using it in a better way the same computer but the instrument was necessary internet is called in sanskrit antar jala or something like that it is just like the maya jala what is this maya jala we consider everything to be permanent solid real but that is all even according to physicists even according to vedantists it is all not exactly real but relative relative in what sense it is not unreal but relative relative means in time it is there in time it is not there that is important to remember many people who describe advaita vedanta etc make this wrong idea that not wrong unreal people will not understand what unreal means they think anyway they are saying that mitha brahma satyam in sat in the sense of existence or being satyam in the sense of being that reality that is absolute trikala badhitam they say what does trikala badhita means it is not it is there in the past it is there in the future it every time that is only one reality called brahman or whatever the rest of it is in time maybe a tree is there for 100 years maybe a plant is there for 10 days maybe the snake we saw in a row for one second but all this time also is very little compared to the trillions and trillions of years that is there in us so everything is relative the mistake we are doing is to consider everything to be solid permanent and holding on to that including our false ego so we must give up that 
now coming to coming back to this computer why i am saying this computer this thing is because what is the use of ad- studying advaita now in this modern times when internet came we started using more of computers then we had laptop and now we have mobile phone etc something else is happening you need not sit all the time before your computer or laptop nowadays there is something called ubiquitous computing what is ubiquitous computing they fit computers to different say for example your refrigerator your car etc everywhere that means you need not sit before your instrument it is called pervasive intelligence all of you know about this those who, the uh, what i am speaking is all elementary because much more advancement has been done so ubiquitous computing or pervasive intelligence means you need not sit before your laptop or computer and work everywhere it is there this is one stage then as you all know the next step is internet of things now you are sleeping on your cot your fridge sees that there are no eggs but guests are coming it will order for eggs the eggs come so everything is now interconnected then you need not already it is all there in the united states etc here also may be driverless cars so the car goes and it sees another car it talks to it and then makes way for it and the doors and windows etc open accordingly everything is now a different magical world called maya this is the internet of things now it is being developed so fast and big companies are investing billions and billions of dollars on all this and all of you know that i know very little i have studied a little i am sharing this using this knowledge for this talk that's all internet of things then there is this augmented reality that is the next stage as you all know what is augmented reality suppose you go to a shop you want to buy a sofa for your house the sofa part is real what you do is you take the picture of the f- sofa you change the background of your how of your room etc the same window etc and see how it looks there no it doesn't look good take another sofa the sofa part is real the background is unreal now vidas as you all know most of you used uh during this corona virus period what is that called zoom etc for lectures and so many things and there you change backgrounds as frequently as you can as if you are sitting on the seashore whereas you are sitting in a room all this is very normal now so this is augmented reality that is becoming very real now companies are all using them and our knowledge is elementary as i say again and again what is happening is much more farming for example there are no more farmers so no more farmer agitation computers are doing farming only thing is a gentleman had come to our ha- uh, holland center and he was telling me the main problem here is to keep changing the password as quickly and as frequently as possible because if some error happens if somebody hacks it the robot will cut off all the trees and plants within moments it's all gone so instead of planting they remove everything so this is happening in every field development medicine especially lot of things are happening so far as augmented reality is concerned then there is one more thing which is higher called virtual reality this is still more amazing still more magical you go to some place there are many parks and zoos you are sitting with your child 
suddenly a penguin comes and jumps on you throwing splashing water you jump up but there is neither the penguin nor the water you may see on youtube there are many videos where tigers are moving about you try to touch the tiger children are very happy they see a chimpanzee moving about they see this thing and they see fish in this thing all that is happening this is virtual reality why i am saying all this is because what we call maya according to advaita is one we are adding more and more nets already we were in one net that is called this fake idea that everything is solid and permanent along with that we are seeing or adding several more nets it is like a tiger wants to escape it is not allowed to escape they put one net then another then another and it is caught this is what is our situation suppose you think you will reject this internet of things this virtual reality augmented reality etc can you even though you may go to a far off village you cannot now because everybody here you have your aadhar card etc suppose you punch an aadhar card somewhere the person will know all your background and details within moments so it's all connected now you cannot escape from this and then finally there is something more coming now ai artificial intelligence this is another universe we are creating for our so lakhs and crores of dollars are being poured into this a professor from delft university and her husband both of them post docs in this artificial intelligence both of them doing wonderful work came to our center to discuss something their question was is this artificial intelligence god now they are claiming that it is god because they can create anything so the argument went on i allowed them to talk you see we can do anything now whatever you can think of we can do god is not necessary anymore we are gods even you can see most of you will have read that i know articles that ai is god and the makers of ai are gods they are creating a new world and so on it's all very common no this is a claim i asked that gentleman and his wife very good that you are considering yourselves to be gods but where are you doing all this on the earth created by somebody whom we call god or whatever why don't you go out of this universe completely even living this body create your own world use your own things not things used by our god made by our god and create it suppose i go to somebody's house and then draw a picture of that house and say hey, listen this is my house because i have drawn the picture he will say you are mad you sit in my house use my pen and paper and draw my house and say it is yours it cannot be similarly ai or whatever is not god and then we have this chat gpt where every question is answered whatever you feed will come what we call internet of things is all data what you feed will come back there is no original intelligence though they say that robots have original intelligence anyway this world is coming now we are in this world of maya first we have to overcome this maya and then think that the world we are in is another maya created by avidya or adhyasa and then go back to that reality so maybe before the 17th or 18th century things were simpler 
because there was no internet of things etc now things have become complex we have added more of nets to ourselves therefore the study of advaita vedanta is relevant and important how suppose we are in this net what does this advaita tell us it doesn't tell us about which net you are in or which maya you are in or what you are thinking it says find out who you are that is all once we know who we are we are standing on firm grounds swami ji's remarkable words are each soul is potentially divine that divinity until and unless we awaken or touch or in some way think of that divinity we are bound by this maya however much we may be strong this will not go away we cannot brush aside this because our mind wants things to be permanent we are seeing that famous uh, question that yaksha asks dharma raja and others what is the greatest mystery of this world is as people see everything passing and still they consider everything to be permanent everything bahu veer huye balwan huye kitne na mahipat man huye tum kahe bhrame mat man karo so bahu veer huye everything is passing in this world but still we think that no we will hold on to this parman advaita vedanta is not belki or something like that what advaita vedanta shankara says yushma dasmat pratyay gocharayo vishaya vishayino the difference is tamah prabhav prakashavat the difference is between like darkness and light but we confuse that we think no this is real this is not it but for us atman is unreal because we don't know anything about that what we are really we don't know it is like our say suppose our coat and pant etc goes around the city and says i am this man but the man himself is not there like that so what we are doing is we don't know about that reality and we confuse that reality for something else that is called false ego and think everything is permanent solid etc <clears throat> therefore advaita vedanta whether it is now or even after a 100000 years when different types of mayas come there is only one hope and that is to hold on to that inner reality what happens you remember swami ji's words success will come glory will come goodness will come everything that is good and great will come when the sleeping soul is roused to self conscious activity swami ji's words all power is within this atman swami ji said so what we have to do in this world of so called relativity or maya is to awaken or to think that we are something different from this floating things we must accept that this is all relative they are all time bound desha kala therefore while shankara acharya gave the philosophical basis for relativity albert einstein gave the mathematical basis for relativity that is what we must understand albert einstein used the same example of two trains swami vivekananda said that if there is something relative motion is always relative it is relative to something otherwise in space if you keep on falling inside a tin you don't know whether you are falling or going up or whatever you don't know something should be there to compare that is relativity relativity of motion 
that Shankara as I read here, Shankara says, Navi Gachantyam, the person is moving in a boat and he sees that the trees are going backwards, but no. And he sees that they are all stationary, but no, they are not stationary. Everything is moving very fast. Our own earth is moving very fast. So this is relativity of motion according to Advaita. That is what Einstein did later. So when we just say, oh, Brahman is real, everything else is unreal, we are just making things very real because people don't understand what is unreal. Unreal means what? In what way is this unreal? We are all living here, breathing here, excuse me. Breathing here, and then we say this is unreal. It is not unreal in that sense, it is relative in time. The snake is also real because I saw it at that moment. The penguin that jumps and splashes water, even today, in this virtual reality, is also real for that moment because your eyes are seeing that. Then, what is the difference between this reality and that? This is also not real. This is our imagination that this is solid. You read any physicist. He will say, no, solid is not solid. It's all just atoms only and you are pressing it, your atoms are pressing there and therefore you feel it is solid. So nothing is real in that sense or in that, everything is relative means time, in time, desha kala. That is what is the essential idea of Advaita. And that Swami Vivekananda says, when you touch that Atman. He says about Maya, Swamiji's wonderful this thing is, he says statement of fact. Statement of fact means you see things and they are there at that moment, that's all. It's time. In time they are there and time also is not absolute. That our Shastras said again and again, Shankaracharya said that, now Einstein declared for the first time that time is not absolute. It is always space-time. They are together. They are relative. All that we know. Now they are saying the same things. Even Aryabhata, those 4,000 years ago, mentioned all these things. Our ancient masters were thoroughly scientific. When they used Sanskrit, they were speaking scientific truths which nowadays are spoken in the mathematical language. That's all. Even for that matter, Aryabhata used the mathematical language only. So therefore, this is the reality. What is reality? There is something called absolute which doesn't change in any time. And time itself is not there. And that is what is called Brahman. Brahman is not God as you know. Brah is the root, which means expansive, vast, unlimited, infinite. Infinite does not mean for our physical this thing, samudra mato bishal, not like that. A point also is infinite. So therefore, infinite means something which is not bound by anything. That The rest is relative. Recently, a scientist who worked in NASA for many years, wrote a book called The God Theory. In that God Theory, he mentions what he thinks of Advaita. According to him, what we speak of this Maya is just cutting off the light which is absolute. Suppose, for example, in your house, you are sitting near the window. The window is open, there is sun there, sunlight is falling, but there is a tree. The leaves of the tree are shaking and on the opposite side, facing you, there is a shadow movement. What is happening there? Entire sunlight would have come, but the tree or the leaves are stopping some of the light. He says this is called Maya. When they say, go to that absolute, they say, remove the tree. What you think as permanent is not permanent, remove the tree. Now finally, my time is up. 
we remember a wonderful thing that happened in the life of swami ji <coughs> swayam shiva shiva's other name is kala time a wonderful experience by the grace of bhagwan shri ramakrishna swami vivekananda was just lightly speaking about this pot is brahman this jar is brahman etc shri ramakrishna came and said tumra ki bolcho and he touched him and vivekananda as we know the story goes he saw both what did he see cornwall street he strikes his head with the, to the lamp he says he is seeing brahman at same this so in time he saw both the absolute and the relative this relative keeps on changing what was there 50 years ago or 100 years ago is not there now it changes because he was shiva himself to tell the world that this happens swami vivekananda because of his magnanimous this thing power he could see both the absolute and the relative at the same time what is that absolute that which will never change that is the basis what did the buddhist say there is no basis according to the buddhist sarvam dukham sarvam kshanikam those of us who came here one hour ago are completely different according to buddhism who those who are here are completely different it keeps on changing how did this happen according to sanghata but according to this advaita vedantis it is vivarta that is the word they use as you all know vivarta means brahma vivarta it is actually absolute but we are seeing as the scientist said it is actually reality we are seeing it as maya this world etc that's what they say but what is this relative only and the others are brahma parinama vadins called the ramanuja people they say it is really change that has happened and sankhyan say it is prakriti parinama vada but all of them ultimately says that this is not permanent that is our sanatana dharma sanatana dharma is always positive it always takes us to the reality through whichever path it says there is only one reality what you call you may call it god or brahman or whatever that is the reality why different paths because as we all know to suit different minds so what is this advaita therefore advaita is the idea that my idea of myself now is wrong i am that infinite reality but i think i am this limited personality that false ego is wrong when that goes this world whatever it is will not bother me finally the story of swami vivekananda is an example of this swami vivekananda is walking along the desert he sees the mirage he sees trees plants and then water he walks towards that then suddenly he realizes that oh i have read so much about that the next day they did not go away they are all there the lake is there the tree is there everything is there but he knows what it is so when we know that we are that reality this temporary this thing will not affect us we are that absolute this is the idea my respectful pranams to all of you so kind of you for listening my respectful pranams to swami ji's jai ram krishna jai ram krishna sarvam shri ram krishna pranam